Erevin Daf Yud Gimel, today's email comes to us from Ephraim Sanzer. He says, you give a geschmack to the Yoimi, you make us laugh and cry each and every day, but most importantly, you make the Daf accessible to all walks of Klai Yisrael. Thank you, Rebbe Ephraim. In the Mishnah, based on the explanation of the Gemara, we have another hidden machlaikas. So machlaikas between the Tanakama and Rebbe Kiva, whether a Mavi entrance that's less than four Tfachim requires some sort of lechi or kaira, it's not clear who says what. Rabbi Kiva told one of his Talmidim, and the Gemara is going to describe him as Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir said, look, the machleg is between Beisham and Beisillel is only if the opening to the Mavi is more than four Amas. But less is no machleg, as everybody agrees, it's either a lechi or a kaira, you don't need both. Says Rabbi Kiva, you're saying that in the name of Rabbi Shmuel. I guarantee you Rabbi Shmuel never said such a thing. I know Rabbi Shmuel. But on the other hand, Rabbi Kiva told him, you know what? The halacha might be like you. So the Gemara explains what he meant to say is, of course, the halacha is not like Rabbi Meir. He wanted to encourage other Talmidim to come up with their own svaris, with their own logic. Why is Rabbi Meir called Talmud Echad? Rabbi Meir learned, the Gemara says, first by Rabbi Kiva. But he didn't come out with anything clear with halacha lamais because Rabbi Kiva could make usur into mutter, mutter into usur. So he first went to Rabbi Shmuel to learn the Mishnah as well. Then only afterwards he came back to Rabbi Kiva to learn the logic and the svaris and to understand the contradictions, etc. The only issue that we have, we have a contradiction between the Bryces. On the one hand, it seems like Rabbi Kiva told Rabbi Meir not to use kankantum. Kankantum is a certain uh, derivative, a certain um, chemical that you put in the ink that doesn't allow the ink to be erased completely. And in the other Bryce, it says that it was Rabbi Shmuel that told Rabbi Meir, don't use kankantum. Rabbi Shmuel asked Rabbi Meir, what do you do for a living? And Rabbi Meir said, I'm a cipher. So he says, you got to be really careful if you're a cipher. If you miss one letter or you add a letter, you could be macher of the world. You could put, instead of Hashem like MS, you take off the Aleph from MS, it comes out Meis, Chaz V'Shalom, or Vayidaber, you'll do Vayidabru as if there's two Rishuyos. He says, Rameir, don't worry. I'm a Bucky. I don't make a mistake. I see everything in front of me. It's as if I'm reading it. What are you worried about? You're worried about perhaps a fly will land on my wet ink and take off the tag of a dollar and make it into a Reish. Don't worry about it. I use Kankan time and therefore it will never be erased completely. But the bottom line is, we don't know who's the one that told him that it's also, was it Rebbe Kiva that says you can't use Kankan time, or is it Rebbe Yishmael? Rebbe holds that you're allowed to add Kankan time to every single parsha in the Torah, besides the parsha of Saita in the Torah, because Rebbe Meir holds that you could take that parsha and use it for a Saita. Rebbe Yaakov says in the name of Rebbe Meir, that even the parasha of Saita, you're permitted to use Kankantam because you're not permitted to use that parasha of the Torah. But where can you use Kankantam? If you're using a special parasha for a Saita, not from the Torah, just writing one specifically for a Saita, do not use Kankantam. The Gemara tells us that this is not dependent on the Machlaikas if, per, let's say, a, a man writes a Megillah Saita for his wife and decides she, she, she comes clean and she admits to it so you can't use it anymore. Could you use it for another woman? So according to Tanakam, it's possible. According to Rav Ache, it's kosher for another woman. It's possible, says the Gemara, that's not connected to this Machlaikis. That a Sevetari that was written parav, without any woman in mind, perhaps that's kosher. The reason why this Megillah is possible is you wrote it specifically for a certain woman. On the flip side, you could say, if you wrote it for a specific woman, so you wrote it for Saita. So it has the power to kill a Saita, let's say. But if you just write it for a Sevetari to lay it on Shabbos, it doesn't have those powers. It's not similar, says the Gemara, to a get. By get, you must write it for a specific woman, and you cannot use it for another woman, even if that woman has the same name as that woman, and the husband has the same name. Whereas by Megillah Saita, it doesn't say that you have to write it for her. It says the asiya, the doing should be for her, meaning the mechika, the erasing of Hashem's name, the erasing of Megillah, should be in her name. The Gemara tells us how great Remeir was. It's known to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that there's no one greater in the generation of Rebbe Meir than Rebbe Meir himself. So why is Halacha not like Rebbe Meir in all places? The answer is because Rebbe Meir never said a Halacha straight out. He would say it in a way, if he, if he held the Halacha that something is Tahar, he would prove to you that it's Tameh. And therefore, there's no, the Talmidim didn't have anything clear and they couldn't pass him like him. His name was in fact Nehoi but they changed it to Meir because he lit up the eyes of the Tamid Chacham and Bahalacha, there was someone else that was called Reb Nohirai. In fact, the Gemara says either his name was Reb Elazar ben Arach, but they called him Reb Nohirai because again, he lit up Klai Yisrael's eyes in Torah.
Rebbe says the reason why I'm so sharp compared to my friends is because I was able to see the back of Rebbe Meir. Had I seen the front of Ahayu Einecha Reises Merecha, I have been that much smarter. How great was Rebbe Meir? He had a, a Talmud, a famous Sumchos. Every time Sumchos had something that was Tameh in front of him, he would bring 48 rise that's Tameh. Tahar, he would bring 48 rise that it's Tahar. The Gemara tells us there's a Talmud, an older Talmud in Yavna, that he proved 150 ways that a Sheretz is not Metama. Well, the Torah says Sheretz Metama. He was able to prove logically without the Torah that it's Metama. How? That's not Metama. He says a snake is a killer. Kills human beings, kills animals. It creates a lot of Tuma in the world. But if you touch a snake itself after it's dead, you're not Tame. So certainly a Sheretz, which doesn't kill human beings and doesn't kill animals, certainly the Sheretz itself should not be Tame. And that was one way that Ravina tried to prove that a Sheretz is not Metama. And the Gemara says Ravina was, wasn't successful because a Sheretz, a snake, is only like a thorn. It's a killer. It's a device that kills. A thorn could kill, yet, and it creates Tuma, yet it itself is not Tame. The Gemara does this for three years. Bisham and argued who the Halach is like. And until a Basil came out and says, Elu ve'elu divrei chayim. But yet the Halach is like a Basil. Why were Basil Zoycha? Because they were humble and they were easygoing and they would repeat over Beishamai Svara first and only afterwards they would say their Svara and it teaches you that if you put yourself down HaKadosh Baruch Hu raises you up if you try to raise yourself up HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts you down and if you chase covered, the covered will run away from you and the opposite is true if you push time you try you think that if you work more hours for Parnassi you'll get more money that's not how it works the hour will run away from you but if you let it happen by itself you will be successful Two and a half years, Bisham and Bisil argued, is it better that man was created or not? They counted and they decided it's better that human beings should not be created. But now that we were created, we should look into our deeds and do tshuva. Says the Mishnah, a kaira, the cross beam on top of the mavi must be a tefach wide in order to hold one and a half tefachim of a half a brick. A brick is three by three, you cut it in half, it's one and a half by three. Now, it's still going to jot out on both sides a quarter of a tevach, but you could fill it up with cement. It has to be really strong. Rabbi Huda says, no, we have a concept called rayim. You pretend it is. You, we see it as if it's strong. If it's crooked, we pretend it's straight. And if it's round and the, and the, the brick is going to roll off, we pretend it's flat. And the, Gemara, the Mishnah finally says, anytime you have a circumference of three, that means the diameter is one, which is basically pi. Have a wonderful day.